welcome back. And this is the second part of our buck converter design example. In this second video, we're going to estimate the losses in the components and then compute the efficiency or the expected efficiency for our design. Here's an overview of this video. We're gonna review the design requirements and specifications from the first part. Then we're going to determine a power budget from based off the efficiency and the power requirements for the design. The next step, we're gonna look at the losses due to the components, and we're gonna look at the losses due to three components, specifically the losses in the inductor, the losses in the diode, and the losses in the MOSFET. We will ignore the losses in the capacitor for this, this uh, first run through on our design. Then we're gonna determine if we meet spec on our design. So let's look at that power budget. So here were our design requirements. We had 15 volts as our input, five volts as our output. We had an expected nominal output power of 10 watts, and we wanted an efficiency of greater than 90%. So if we look at our output power divided by our input power, that has to be greater than 0 0.9. So here we have P sub zero is equal to new where that's our efficiency 0 0.9 times pi now pi is equal to our output power plus our total loss we can substitute that into this equation above Finally, we can get an equation for our total loss. And now I'm going to put the equality back in and it has to be less than our output power times one over new minus one. And for this design, that is less than 10 watts times 1 over 0.9 minus 1, 1.11 watt. So that is our power budget that we get to work with, 1.11 watt. And if the losses are less than that, we will meet our specification of 90% efficiency. Let's look at the, the inductor. Recall that our inductor was originally sized and we, we wanted inductor of 16, I believe it was 16.5 micro Henry's, and that created a ripple current of about 20%. And we discussed in the last video, we could either use the 22 microhenry inductor or the 15 microhenry inductor if we were willing to live with a slightly larger ripple. I'm going to suggest that we use the 15 microhenry inductor and we see it has a DC resistance of 50 milliohms. So our equivalent series resistance for our inductor is equal to 50 milliohms. And recall that the inductor is always conducting with an average value of I out. It conducts when the MOSFET is closed and it conducts when the MOSFET is open through the diode. And its average value for this design is equal to two amps. So our loss through the inductor, which I'll label P sub L, is equal to I squared R. And this is the equivalent series resistance of the inductor, which so doing the math, we have four amps squared, this will give us watts, times 50 milliohms. And if we do the math, we see that that is 200 milliwatts. 
So that's 200 milliwatts or 0.2 watts that is going to be applied to our power loss budget. Let's look at the loss in the diode. Recall in the diode that we selected, we had a forward voltage drop that was equal to 0 0.3. We were looking at a Schottky diode, so we did not also we did not have to worry about the reverse recovery uh, current in the diode. And there's losses in reverse recovery. Uh, it has an extremely low forward voltage uh, drop of, of 0.3, and uh, we look now at the current uh, and the instantaneous power in this interval when it is conducting in the forward direction. I'm going to use our average current value of 2 amps to do a very good estimate of our, our instantaneous power. Well, even if, even if we didn't, it would still come out to be the same. And we see that we have an instantaneous power of... 2 amps times 0.3 volts, and it has a duration over this switching period. That duration is 1 minus D times TS. So our average power to associated with the diode is equal to 2 amps times 0.3 volts all times uh, 0.667, which is the, the duration of this period, or two-thirds. When we run the numbers on this one, we see that this is equal to 400 milliwatts. We have the loss in the inductor that was 200 milliwatts. The loss in the diode, 400 milliwatts, which brings us up to 600 milliwatts, which only leaves us with about 500 milliwatts left for the MOSFET. Now let's look at the MOSFET. Recall in a MOSFET there are two components to losses. One is due to conduction loss. And the other is due to switching. The conduction loss is dependent upon the average output and the duty cycle D. The switching loss is dependent upon the turn on time, the turn off time, the switching frequency, so let's put these all down, turn on time, turn off time, switching frequency, our drain to source voltage when we are off, for this example, it's 15 volts, and our drain current when we are conducting, and for this example, it's 2 amps. So that makes up the switching loss. For this diode, if you recall, we had a drain to source resistance that was equal to 8.5 milliohms. So our, our conduction loss for the MOSFET is equal to our output squared times our drain to source resistance times the time it's conducting all divided by the total time and therefore it is equal to I out squared, which is four times, I'll keep it in milli, 8.5 milli times one third. This conduction loss is equal to 11.3 milliwatts, which is relatively low compared to the diode and the inductor. Let's now compute the switching loss. Recall for an inductive load, the voltage is clamped while the current 
rises up to the output value, at which time the voltage will drop to a level that is dictated by I out times RDS. And the instantaneous power is equal to the product of these two and looks like a triangle. that has a height of our VDS times our I out. We have a similar triangle for turnoff time. And all of this happens in one switching interval. This provides us with an equation for the average switching loss equal to the area under the turn on and turn off times, these are triangles, so it's one half base times height, divided by the total time to average it out. And from that we see that we have one half VDS times I out. And I'm going to combine the two triangles together, T on plus T off. And, and it's an average, so we multiply this all by TS. Again, one-half VDS I on, I out, T on, plus T off. And I'll bring that TS up into the numerator as a switching frequency. For this problem, that's going to be one-half times... 15 volts, that's our drain to source voltage for this problem. We have two amps out. Recall, I'm going to use from the data sheet our turn on and turn off time, which was approximated as 21 nanoseconds. And uh, we were using a switching frequency of 500 kilohertz, which I have been writing as 0.5 megahertz. So that's 5 EE6. We have an EE minus 9 there. Let me, let me switch to a new page. So our switching loss is equal to fifteen times twenty one E nine times zero point five E six. Again, yeah, 21 nanoseconds, 500 kilohertz. This is equal to 157 E minus 3, and that's in watts, or 157 milliwatts. So the total loss for our MOSFET was equal to the 11.3 milliwatts from conduction, relatively small, plus 157 milliwatts for our switching loss. The one way we can always reduce the switching loss is by changing and re reducing our switching frequency. If we decrease our switching frequency by a half, our switching loss will also decrease by one half. But let's add these up. That is equal to 168.3 milliwatts. Now let's look at our total losses. We had 200 milliwatts from our inductor. We had 400 milliwatts from our diode. And we had 168.3 milliwatts from our MOSFET. This provides us with a total of 768 milliwatts, which, which meets our requirement of, I believe our power loss budget was uh, 1,100 milliwatts or 1.1 watt. If we wanted even more efficiency, probably the best place to look would be at replacing the diode with a MOSFET and converting to a synchronous buck 
converter. If we assume we had the same loss of 168 milliwatts, we could get a possible efficiency of 536.6 milliwatts. Our efficiency for a sink could be about 10 watts over 10.5, and I'm going to round this up four, and that's equal to 0.94. Eight, or 94% efficient. Now, what I did not factor into this was the gate driver control for the MOSFET or if we used a sink for the MOSFETs. And you would have to factor that in. That would reduce our efficiency from 94%, uh, possibly down to 93%. And I think we had enough power law, po enough in our power budget to account for, for a controller as well. So that's how you do the analysis for estimating the efficiency of that buck converter. And let's look and review the key points. Uh, first, we developed the power budget, and we developed the power budget based on our output power requirement and our efficiency re power requirement. And for this design, we saw that that power budget was 1.1 watt, or we were working in milliwatts, so 1,100 milliwatts, was our power budget. We estimated the loss for the devices. We did not estimate the loss for the capacitor or for controller that would be controlling the MOSFET. Um, but our first estimate was pretty good. We had 200 milliwatts for our inductor due to the uh, resistance in the windings. We had 400 milliwatts in our Schottky diode. Uh, and that's why we used a Schottky. If we used a regular fast recovery diode, that would be much higher than that. And we had uh, about 100 and, uh, 180 milliwatts in our MOSFET. And that, and that 180 milliwatts consisted of just a little bit over 11 milliwatts for our conduction loss, which was the smaller of the two, and our, our switching loss. We used those numbers to compare compute our total loss, and we validated the efficiency of our design, and we did meet the spec of greater than 90%, which we set out to do. So um, those are the two videos for uh, designing, uh, at least at a high level, uh, buck converter. As I've said before, design is a very iterative process that uh, you may go through this once and then look at your design and then start adjusting uh, different components to, to make, either make improvements or reduce costs. We really did not look at a cost criteria in this design, but that's all part of the design process. So thanks for watching this design example.